Here I'm going to show you how to repair the buttons in the Kenwood RC-140 remote control. Uh, now I don't have a keypad for this one because there's so many buttons and they're all identical. Um, they can be handled with my universal 5mm, uh, it's 10mm square with a 5mm circle conductive dot. Um, and all the buttons are just, you'll see it when we get it open, they're just checkerboarded right in there. Um, to get it open, there's four screws. Take the battery compartment of batteries out. There are four screws in the corner, small Phillips screwdriver. Now the other things you'll need is a small flat screwdriver or some sort of flat tool to help pry it open. Uh, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, I like uh, the 91%. 70% um, is okay, but it has more water. Um, you need a cleaning rag, Q-tips, etc. Uh, I took those four corners out, four screws in the corners, and that's the top. I'm going to start with the bottom and see if I can. You can just sort of pry it open just a little bit, and then we want to put. I've got a flat screwdriver, and I just put it in the gap, and I'm going to slide it up. And as you go up, you'll get to the clips, and it just unpops the clips like that and then flip it over do the same thing on the other side so there's no prying you're not gonna damage the plastic so that's loose enough now on the springs here there's there's two battery springs that are on the board the rest of them are just attached as back housing so when you take that off those have to slide out and they, they stick a little bit so you might want to help it out by just sort of pushing a little bit on that. That one sticks more. Okay, so now we've got it apart. And there's a, like a window. It's a dark window. Only lets the infrared light through, really. And that just slides in. There's a couple slots, so just pull that out. And then we've got the circuit board. And pull that apart keyboard. Now, there's a couple switches here that are loose plastic slider switches, so be careful of those that they don't fall out. And then here we have the keypad board. Now another thing that happens to remotes a lot is these heavier components. Um, they vibrate a little bit when you drop it and sometimes they break off. So if you have any major problems, like your remote doesn't work at all, you could look at those and see if they're broken off, kind of wiggle it a little bit and that could be soldered back on and then there's the LEDs up top the rest of it seems pretty solid like these aren't going to come off probably because they're springs and that maybe that one anyway so the buttons fail because these get dirty and just sort of coated over um, this one I've already worked on cleaned it up, but there was a lot of shiny black buttons. Now, you can clean up, if the button works all right, you can just clean it up. Um, use the isopropyl alcohol. Definitely clean the whole circuit board. Just rub it down really good. You don't want to use anything abrasive cleaner. Just a nice soft rag and rubbing alcohol. And then you can do the same thing with the rubber keypad, like that. If this is really nasty, like full of Doritos and stuff, you could take this out and wash it with hot water and soap in the sink. Um, let it dry off, but I still, uh, you ought to go over all the buttons with uh, the isopropyl alcohol. Now, the black pills can actually wear out and they can get coated with oils and dirt. Um, so the heavily used buttons like, oops, oh, see I just tipped it over and lost a switch. Okay, if it does fall out, there's, um, I don't, yeah, it probably does matter a little bit. Um, there's a slot and a switch. And, and there's also a little bump up there that goes into, to little notches. So just put it back in. But um, 
the volume heavily used buttons uh, you can clean them but they're just going to wear out again pretty quickly so any of your favorite buttons I would definitely put uh, this repair kit and it's a five millimeter again 10 millimeter square rectangle with a five millimeter circular conductive dot and there's a little thin spacer in there so it doesn't short out your button and all you do is you pick uh, you know these are your volume buttons if this was flipped over um, some remotes mark the buttons but this one doesn't have any markings like they tell you this is volume or whatever but this is pretty crammed together so so you just pick a, a corner and peel off the paper liner and then you just line it up now I want the black dot over the button like that there we go and I'm going to do the volume down and you can do as many of these as you like um, the buttons are pretty much staggered so you know you could do a whole bunch of them it does like you might have to trim a little bit if you were doing a, a long row like um like these are 10 millimeter part it looks like these buttons are maybe just nine and a half millimeters because eventually you get down here and it's way off so if you did want to do a long row it would be hard to get all these lined up but what you can do with these buttons is just trim off a little bit of the side preferably you don't want to you don't want to cut all the way off you want to try not to cut into the circle um, so you can trim them down a ways but you know if you can get away with it don't trim it down I do have different size buttons if you have a different remote control you're working on so there we go I got the volume up and down I'm gonna hold these in yeah, I'm not too familiar with this room myself because I don't use it but definitely the volume um, I don't see any obvious like channel button there's some channels up here but they're for different peripherals so for now I'm just gonna do those and then to put the remote back together make sure those switches are there and those two posts and these two holes line up so then this goes back in and there's two plastic slots pins that go in the slots like that and then we put this back on now you gotta get those battery springs into the slots so you can see that there make sure they're in there and they're gonna yeah, slide right up like that and then you can snap it back together put those four screws in and you're all set and any buttons you fix with uh, these should never have problems again if you did do something wrong like line them up wrong or whatever so that they don't work um, because they're not they're not lined up uh, you can take this apart right away you know within a few hours and move those around and the glue gets it gets really sticky after about 24 hours um, so you want to do it you know relatively quickly um, so just put it back together and test the buttons that you use and the the transmit light will light up when you push them there's no batteries in here so it's not working but um, you can get an idea if you need to take it apart again and fix anything and that's it thanks